But uh, uh, thank you for joining us this morning. This is um, November 17th, uh, 2020. And <coughs> I know a lot of things are going on in our in our uh, world today with COVID and, and how that kind of changes the way we do things. Uh, I think in so many different things in our life uh, as we have adapted and adjusted in so many different ways. Uh, but uh, I know for church, uh, there is an adjustment there as well. Um, we're always, uh, you know, we're always on the lookout for uh, how to go about things and <coughs> sorry and uh yeah you know i think in the next couple of days uh uh we'll probably uh, send out an email see what we're gonna or how to proceed uh in the future uh but or, or this week actually uh but um you know i thought about it and you know i know there's a lot of change and a lot of disruption uh you know there's all these colors red purple yellow i, I still am confused on I know purple's the worst, but other than that, um, I know there's a, a hue, many hues of colors uh, uh, that are kind of measured, right? And, um, you know, I, I've i been thinking about it a lot, and, uh, you know, it it's just the time that we're living in, and always with our eyes on our neighbor, always with the welfare of our neighbor, Right, commandment, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, commandment five, right? Um, that we uh, definitely, uh, thou shalt not murder. That is not only murder, but also care for our neighbor's body, right? Uh, and, you know, it's an interesting time in so many different ways. But more and more we know that... Uh, we're not just living on platitudes such as we're just going to roll with it, but rather, you know, this is just an interesting time and, and, and we simply uh, live day by day under our Lord, uh, knowing that uh, he, is, he is with us and he is guiding us. And, and he, I think even for church, I know there's a lot of changes, but at the end of the day, it'll, you know, we just need to continue to kind of you know, ride this this wave uh, of this interesting time and, and be faithful to God's word, be faithful and loving to neighbor and, and uh, you know, uh, just praying that uh, this uh, virus would subside, that we could get through this and that all of us are safe. Uh, but, um, but yes, uh, you know, just continue to pray and, and, and know that uh, uh, through all things, um, you know, our our Lord is the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And, uh, yes, uh, we're just gonna, with his peace, go through. Uh, Christ and Calamity, this week, Thursday, 9.15. Uh, 9.15, 9-ish, 9.15. And uh, we will go through chapter one, Your Calamity. So I want you to read that. <laughs> I want you to read that uh, for Thursday. It's page one to eight. That should be less than a 10 minute read. All right. Uh, that should be less than 10 minute read. And what we'll do is uh, we will go through several parts of the paragraph and paragraphs and we will talk about them and really kind of go deeper uh, into what Dr. Senkbaugh wrote. And uh, again, um, what he writes is, you know, why I love his books is because it's always about Jesus. And what an important thing that is. So, Christ and Calamity, this week, uh, <coughs> pages 1 to 8, uh, your calamity. And we're going to talk about what that is uh, in the midst of our, our our flesh and what we were born into. All right. Why don't we begin? Uh, Long Gospel Tuesday, according to Matthew 25, 14 to 30, Sermon Review, The Giving and Gracious Lord. All right, uh, this week uh, we, we talked about the parable of the talents, and that's what we're going to kind of review today and go deeper into that. Let, let us begin with a word of prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, you have given exceedingly great 
and precious promises to those who trust in you. Dispel from us the works of darkness and grant us to live in the light of your Son, Jesus Christ, that our faith may never be found wanting. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. All right. So, today, you know, when we talk about uh, the gospel texts, and we will preach on this tomorrow <coughs> for our midweek sermon, uh, Midweek Vespers on First Thessalonians chapter 5. Um, and they really do go hand in hand. I mean, when you read First Thessalonians chapter 5, 1 to 11, you know, we talk about the Lord coming um, like a thief in the night, right? Um, but while the world is complacent, there is peace and security, then then suddenly the uh, the Lord returns like a thief in the night, and 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 uh, people of the night and darkness are not ready. They're sleeping. They're drunk. Right? They're distracted by the dissipations of this life. Children of light, children of day, who are sober, ready, uh, spiritually, um, in the word, in faith, and love, as we talk about the, uh, as we see in First uh, Thessalonians chapter five, verse eight. Uh, we talk about the armor of God, the breastplate of faith and love, and the helmet. Right? The helmet of salvation. Right? And it's interesting because, again, what does he say uh, in the last verse there? Encourage one another, just as he said last week, uh, St. Paul to Thessalonica, uh, and build one another up just as you are doing. Now, as we continue here with that whole motif of like a thief in the night, are you ready? Right? <coughs> um, are you, are you, uh, are your eyes open? Uh, are, are you, uh, are, are you, um, in that light, are you the children of the day? Uh, are your eyes open and sober-minded because the devil is like a prowling lion uh, waiting to attack? Last week, we talked about watch, right? Uh, with the parable of the ten virgins. Watch, for you, ne for you do not know the day nor the hour. And it, this is just a continuation of that. Because again, we're, we're getting closer to the end of the church here. And here we see the parable of the talents. Why don't we read it together? Matthew 25, verses 14 to 30. All right, let us begin. If you have your Bibles, uh, read along. If you want to listen, the art of listening is great, by the way. Uh, listen and carefully close your eyes and just dwell upon the Word of God. Hopefully my mic is working. It probably isn't. But check one, two, three. I doubt it is. Uh, Facebook, I think, has a little glitch in there. I don't know. There's a glitch with using external mics. So um, <coughs> hopefully by tomorrow, <coughs> I'll figure out my other app and see if that'll work uh, for the future. All right. Verse 14, beginning. Uh, Jesus said, For it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one. To each according to his ability. Then he went away. He would receive the five talents, went at once and traded with them and made five talents more. So also he who had the two talents made two talents more. But he who received the one talent went, what did he do? He, he dug in the ground and hid his master's money. Now after a long time, the master of, uh, of, of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you, you delivered to me five talents, and here I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have, made, you have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter in the joy of your master. And he also who had the two talents came forward, saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here I have made two talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of the master. He also who had received the one talent came forward saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here. You have what is yours. But his master answered him, You wicked 
and slothful servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gathered where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and at my coming I should have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has will more be given, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the worthless service into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Now, it's interesting, the last sentence there with the weeping and gnashing of teeth, right? Uh, you know, and then we say, this is the gospel of the Lord. And, 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 you know, this is interesting because, you know, when we talk about our Lord, and, and the sermon title is, Good, uh, the Giving and Gracious Lord. I think, right? The Giving and Gracious God. The Giving and Gracious Lord. But, anyways, uh, you know, when we look at these texts, especially 1 Thessalonians 5, even Zephaniah, right? Um, there is that reminder of, yes, there is, uh, there is the wrath of God to those who, uh, well, who reject and turn from God and His Word, right? Um, and, and that's kind of a, a, an angle I think I didn't talk too much about in my sermon, um, but we will talk about that today, all right? So, what is the story? Parable, kingdom of God. What will it be like when he returns, right? Talents, five, two, one. First two servants did what? Invested, traded, doubled. Five to ten, two to four. Um, and there, you know, I, I love this interaction here in the text, if you have your Bible out. Um, <coughs> They basically just said, look, I made five, five more. I made two, two more. But then the third one didn't say anything at all. Rather, he, he characterizes the master in a way to which, well, at the end of the day, um, not only was it uh, 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 not the right way of seeing the master, but also you, you, you see the... Uh, the result uh, that this servant uh, was slothful, that he was wicked, uh, that he was lazy, that he was complacent. Um, and, you know, it really brings me back to reflections and patterns, right? Now, again, one tension is this. We make God for who we want him. Thank you, Carrie. Is my mic working, by the way, Carrie? I'm not sure. Can you... I'm not sure. Can you check one, two, three? I don't think it is, but you never know. Miracles happen, right? Uh, but uh, uh, what we talk about... And I'm glad you're back, by the way, Carrie. Or I think you're back. Anyways, um, uh, what was I saying? Yes, uh, when we see God in a certain way... Now, this man was interesting because, you know, he saw, he saw someone who... Uh, the master as someone who is hard, uh, someone who demands, someone who takes, <coughs> someone who is all about himself, this master. Now, um, now again, it, it's interesting because even with that view, you would think, as I said in the sermon, that uh, this, this servant would at least walk on eggshells and, and try, to, uh, uh, try to please this hard man, even though that was... Um, ultimately, the incorrect way of viewing God. Um, but it, it just caught me to that moment there. I didn't talk about it in the sermon too much, about patterns and reflections, right? Actually, I deleted it um, in the morning, I think. I took it out. I'm always, you know, when, when you're preaching, you know, when you're a preacher, you all the way up to the beginning of the service time, you're, you're, um, you're always editing and deleting and adding and all these things, right? It never stops. So, at least for me. But um, but uh, that whole notion of <coughs> patterns and reflections, right? That we reflect. Uh, we pattern after who is before us. We pattern after uh, the, the master 
uh, above us, right? So when we talk about our, our, our reflection, our pattern, you know, in the sermon, you know, I love to bring up the catechism. Well, because you should never stop reading the catechism. You should have that memorized, right? Not memorized per se, but you should have that in you. You should be submerged in, in all the, the, the words and, and the understandings of the six chief parts, right? It should just kind of go clockwork to you. You might not have it memorized word for word, but at least have it with you so that as I talk about in catechism class, always with that wavelength, right? Always understanding uh, what that, uh, how we thread through uh, the linear understanding of the catechism of, let's say, the Apostles' Creed, which I brought up in the sermon, but to bring out that full breadth of what the catechism means. You got to read it, right? And when you when you delve into, especially the first, uh, second, third, all of them, uh, we, we see how God creates. We didn't choose to be here. That everything comes from our Lord who provides and he still provides for us. He still takes care of us. Again, why? As a reason, the catechism, out of his fatherly divine goodness without any merit or worthiness in me, right? I mean, when you think about that, you thank the Lord, uh, as you look at the kids eat bagels this morning before they went to school, you thank the Lord for all that we have, cream cheese, bagel, milk, you know, we, we thank the Lord for, uh, 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 for providing for them, uh, for sustaining them in the one true faith, third article of the creed, the work of the Holy Spirit, not by human reason or strength, right, uh, but through the word of God who has called us, he called us, right? No free will, no decision. He called us by faith, baptism. Anyways, uh, but also second article, right? I mean, the redemption, the blood of Christ. Uh, this is the great love that he has given to us. Now, when we talk about God, at the end of the day, God is love. Now, what is that love? It is Christ, right? It is Christ. And again, understanding who our master is, <coughs> patterns... Um, this life of faith, right? So if I believe that my God is a legalistic God, that I have to ascend and, and, and take the steps to be that perfect Christian, um, then I'm going to have a motivation of doing good works for that very sake, to make that ascent, to climb the ladder to salvation. Now, other people might have a view of God as one of very great, uh, uh, a permissive God. Someone who says all, you know, everything's a green light, you know, don't worry about the law, you do you, whatever uh, you feel, what, whatever makes you feel good, go with it because God is okay with that. And again, um, how, it, uh, how it reflects upon how we live, right? Um, you know, and, and this is, again, that, that, that reflection and pattern, our view of God is so important. Right? The correct view of God is so important. And even so, you know, we see the pitfall here and we see the tension is that in that journey of faith, this one servant who dug that one talent, what does it say, Jesus, or this master said, which is Jesus at the end of the day um, in the parable? He says, you wicked and slothful servant, lazy, wicked, right? Lazy complacent, wicked, not sober-minded, a children of darkness, drunk at night, not sober, it, it, knee deep or head deep or neck high in, in the drunkenness and dissipations of this life. Um, and when that thief of the night comes, just like we heard last week, th there's no, there's no two minute warning, right? Th there's, there's no, um, uh, there's no, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, we, we don't know uh, the hour or the season that the Lord will return, right? Uh, there is no exact time. We don't know. God only knows. And therefore, I think uh, we see the cautionary reminder of those that are, well, uh, those that think that they know God by their own terms. And soon enough, our pride, our, our, our complacency, our laziness comes into play. And this is the constant tension that we see. Now, I think uh, another uh, nugget here, kind of a homiletical handle, as we would call it, uh, would be, um, and that's something, again, that whole, uh, what do we do in this pilgrimage of faith? 
How are we to be ready again? Word and sacrament, right? In the word, dwelling upon God and his word, not as a work, right? Uh, but in the joy of his word, there we are appointed to who? There in the sacrament, we are appointed to who? Father, Son, Holy Spirit, right? But also, I think uh, in this text, uh, we see the life of <coughs> stewardship, right? Uh, the life of vocation, what we are called to do. Now, when we talk about the first two, they live their life, right? Under the master. Under the joy of the master. Right? When, when we uh, live in this faith, uh, what a great joy it is because we are already set free. Right? Uh, we're, we're not gaining or earning or, or amassing the merits. We're already there. The blood of Christ, his crimson blood has, has, has finished all things. Right? And we are already there living under this master who ultimately, even in his wrath, sends the son Jesus who takes on that cup of wrath. And ultimately, our Lord, our father who sent his son shows to us his love. Right? You know, I, you know, our, our kids, you know, um, I think inherently they're not perfect, uh, but deep down inside, you, you know, you always know that your kids, uh, well, they, whether they want to admit it or not, uh, they do enjoy um, uh, pleasing you as parents. Uh, 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 they want you to be proud of them, right? Um, ideally, ideally. Now, again, we, we don't live in a perfect world, so it can go, you know, here or there. But, but when it comes to our Lord, again, we're, we're patterned we, we, by what he has done as we live under his name, right? Uh, when we know this gospel, when we hear and receive this gospel, that Jesus died for sinners and he rose on the third day, and yet that he has given you the victory to eternal life. Uh, the, living the life of a Christian is not about eggshells, right? It's not about uh, trying to uh, please a legalistic God. It's not about you. Because God has already stood in your place and died for you. And in this life that we have, we live under the Master and... Um, in that life under the master, there in faith, we continue to love and serve. Now, when you hear those words, love and serve, um, again, uh, it's our legalistic heart that says, well, I have to do that. Right? Like our underneath, our conscience might say, well, you know, I'm dealing with this in my troubled conscience that... Well, if I prove my worth or show more or do more, well, then my conscience will be better. And again, we need to go back to who is our master. Now, when we are the master, we will go through those hoops. We will go through all those ways to justify ourselves. Because at the end of the day, if it's not Christ, we are the master. And when we are the master, we, we put God on on our own terms, rather than what his word says, right? What his word says is that ever since the fall into sin, right? That we were all born into sin. And there, uh, uh, by his love, he gives us Jesus Christ to, to be the sacrifice for our sins. Now, when we live this Christian life, it's not perfect, Daily we are called to repentance. And that's not a work. Again, when we hear repentance, we're like, I have to do that. No. It's a life of faith that lives under the master. And we confess our sins. And our Lord is faithful and just. And he will forgive our sins. Because we know who our master is. We struggle with sin. We battle with sin. Uh, and when we fall short in his sin, what do we do? Do we run away from God wondering, uh, you know, do we run away and try to figure it out ourselves? No, we, we go to him. We confess. 
We confess our sins. And there we know and rest in the promise of Christ. Right? Uh, and through that understanding of who our Lord is, there we proceed to live the victorious life. And how this shapes how we live, move, and have our being as children of the day, as children of light, which we will talk about tomorrow, right? And uh, here we see it in the parable, right? Um, and, uh, you know, again, we see that tension. And um, I, I think it's very easy, as we talk about this more, I think it's very easy to... To make God who we want him to be rather than what his word says, right? And yes, there is that whole last verse with, and people don't want to talk about it, right? The weeping and gnashing of teeth, that one servant who was cast out, right? This is, this is our Lord and his word. Um, and, and those who, again, reject and turn and go on their own way, right? Um, that is... That is always a destructive path. And we see the result here. Right? Um, and, and this is all too real uh, when we are caught up in darkness. Um, and, you know, again, um, <coughs> as we look at this parable, um, how, yes, uh, this fleshly nature can destroy us, how, how uh, we can go on our way um, in our sinful nature. And, yes, uh, for us Christians, uh, we all fall short, right? This is not about measuring up, but rather come to me who all you who are broken and heavy laden. That in our brokenness, there is Christ, right? In our brokenness, as Luther would say, the Christian life, one, on one side, he says, this is a life of trial, warfare, and struggle. The Christian life, right, is what? Uh, a, a life of repentance. And even in, in his deathbed, as they found that uh, paper um, in his pocket, uh, uh, yeah, we are beggars and this is, this is true. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's about the life of faith that, that trusts and clings to the master, uh, clings to the master for who he is, that he is a gracious and giving God who forgives all of our sins, who leads us in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. And this is most certainly true just as he has risen from the dead and reigns to all eternity, right? And thus daily we live under his word. We live daily um, in repentance. We live daily in the joy of forgiveness. And we continue on loving and serving all those who are around us. All those that God has assigned to us. We continue to live out this life of faith in the freedom of a Christian. And when that time comes, when he returns, <clears throat> we will be ready. Right? We will be ready as we live under uh, his name, under, under, under the master. All right. Uh, yes. Very good. Uh, I guess we'll end there. Um, but um, hopefully that we hit some kind of angles there with text. I know uh, there's a lot of stuff here. I, I think a lot of people have questions about these things. Um, you know, even the amounts of talents. Again, I, I don't, that's not really the point. Um, but again, um, uh, that's not really the focus here, right? Uh, but, um, you know, I, I think again, uh, when we look at this text, um, I think the key point is, who is God? What does the word of God say about our Lord? Right? And what does that mean for us in a sense of how we live our lives? Everything is dictated upon, uh, completely controlled by the Word of God. Uh, when we turn from that, then everything changes, right? Our view of God, the way we live, our faith, right? it, it all changes. That is why it's so important uh, when we talk about uh, the creed to know what that means. 
Because when someone asks who is God, where do you go? Boom, boom, boom. Article 1, Article 2, Article 3, Apostles' Creed. You go to that in your heart and mind as you have learned it, and there you find who your God is. Right? Um, anyways. All right. Why don't, we, uh, why don't we stop there this day? Uh, let's continue with a word of prayer. Dear, dear Lord, uh, we, we're so thankful for this day. But through all things, uh, we know that we live under your masterful care. Bless us, O Lord, in this life of faith. Uh, grant us faith. Um, sustain us in this faith as we continue to walk in the pilgrimage of this faith. Lord, as children of day, keep our eyes open, sober-minded, faithful in the word. Grant us comfort. in the restoration given by your Son, who died on the cross and rose for us. Bless us in the gospel, and lead us by this gospel, knowing full well that the victory has already been won, and that we live under the joyous status as children of God. Bless us in our callings, those that you have assigned to us according to our ability, and lead us, O Lord, always in the freedom that you have given through your Son. Bless us this week and, and grant us your safety during COVID. And <coughs> Lord, lead us by your peace through all things. Lord, we know uh, that we are going through many things at this time and many things are up in the air. But Lord, your comfort is eternal. And by your grace and your gift, we live under the refuge of your wing. Bless us this week and lead us always in your word. We pray this in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right, friends, thank you for joining us today. Uh, for whenever you're hearing this, thank you, Carrie, for being the, um, you should be a, Carrie, you should be a courtroom uh, annotator. You know those people that type quick? Because you're really good at that, by the way, right? Uh, that's pretty awesome. Anyways, uh, again, keep, keep on keeping on, right? Uh, in the Lord, Thursday, 9.15, 9-ish, 9.15, Christ and Calamity, Chapter 1, read it ahead of time, pages 1 to 8, Your Calamity, Chapter 1. And how we will do it is I will read excerpts and we will talk about it. If you have questions, live, that is, uh, uh, bring, bring them down on the comments and I will answer them directly. Okay? Um, but I hope to see you there. If you need a book, we do have extras. I think we have 10 more books, Right? <laughs> 10 more books and you know I hope that we can run out of them because this is an important thing for our congregation for all of us to band together and and read together and, and meditate together and dwell upon the words of Christ together so if you know someone from church that doesn't have this book um, please tell them to get it and they're at church right please tell them to get it um, and for those youtubers out there that are listening um, again, not too late, Amazon Prime, two-day shipping, right? Ten bucks on Amazon plus tax, probably eleven, eleven fifty. But um, please join us. It's not too late. Um, and um, I can't emphasize <coughs> how important this book is. All right. Have a wonderful day. And God bless you all. And until next time, adios. And goodbye.